Howdy folks. Today we are looking at the uh, Lepi LP V3S. This is another one of the non-tripath tripath knockoffs. This one is powered by the TDA 7377, which I know basically nothing about. So I don't know if this thing's any good, and I don't actually think I've had this one open before, even though it's been sitting on the shelf for quite a while. So I'm not sure what uh, this guy's gonna look like on the inside. So let's uh, bust it open and check it out. This one is a little bit different than we've seen before. All right, LP V3D version 2.0 with the amplifier very much on the bottom with a bunch of uh, thermal paste. And if you look inside the case here, uh, yeah, you can see thermal paste all over in there. That's kind of fun. All right, let's see if we can stand this guy up without breaking it. To see if the chip is what it's supposed to be. I honestly can't see in there. But let's uh, push that back down where it was. But if we read right here, it does say TDA 7377A, so that probably is actually what it's based on. But yeah, there's basically no circuitry here comparatively. We don't even have our set of four filter caps that all of the others seem to have. The jacks and knobs and LEDs and things are about the same as uh, all the others in this kit, but yeah, I'm not seeing uh, much other similarity. Let's, uh, of course, compare it with the uh, good old original LP 2020A+. Other than the form factor, not a lot of similarity there at all. So let's put it back. Uh, no, I'm not gonna put it back together. Yeah, we do have to put it back together because the amplifier has got the needs the case for the heatsink. So we're going to put it back together. Then we will do some testing and see how well this thing works. see how this compares to some of the others. Uh, I don't know if you could see during the uh, time lapse there that the tone switch is super, super dirty on this thing and I had to uh, scratch it around a little bit, you know, click it on and off a thousand times to get it to uh, clean up enough that it wasn't distorting out really early as you can see here on the 13 volt test. So comparing to the 2024, it's actually quite a bit nicer. 73, well, nicer on the low end. 73, 106 versus 109. 74 versus 70, 
105, yeah, the trebles are weaker, the base is stronger. Interesting. Let's compare it to somebody we know a little better. Let's see, the TI. Looks like the base is about on par with the TI, 73, 74, 76. Yeah, it's about on par with the TI, but its trebles are weak. And comparing it to uh, 2051 is not a fair comparison. Comparing it to the original 2020. Yeah, 73. And then 106 versus 112. So it's about... Oh, this is the, the Kinter, sorry, not the, not the original, original. Got the original around here somewhere, I'm sure. I'll uh, put the, you know, add this to the chart in the blog post, which will be linked down in the description below. But yeah, it looks like it's, it's base handling is about on par with the, with the other decent models, but its treble is really weak and it's, the build quality on the switches at least isn't awesome. I also noticed that the, uh, the volume knob here kind of catches and is also seems a little wigglier than the other. So I would say the overall fit and finish quality of this one doesn't feel as good. The switch, you know, the dials just kind of feel cheaper. The pots feel cheaper. So I'm not a huge fan. I'll probably wind up doing some listening tests and we'll see how it comes out. But, uh, Overall, with the data that I've got right now, I'd say probably steer clear of this one and stick with the Kenter or the original 2028 plus. Uh, yeah, that's about what we got for today. And I guess we will talk to you next time.